Okay, so how well do you actually understand basic math? Well, if you have pretty strong basic math skills, this should be a very easy problem to solve without the aid of a calculator. All right, so let's take a look at this problem. We have three times parentheses four plus 16 divided by two times two and parentheses. And this is a multiple choice question. Let's take a look at our answers. So A is 60, B is 30, C is 24, and D is 90. All right, so once again, no calculators, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's take another look at this problem. Seems like it's pretty straightforward. And uh, if you know how to do basic addition, division, and multiplication, there should be no reason for you to get this answer or this problem wrong. Unfortunately, a lot of you are going to get the wrong answer, but let's take a look at the correct answer right now. The correct answer is A, 60. All right, now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence because you appear to be a certified professional expert in the area of the order of operations. Because assuming you know how to do basic multiplication, addition, and division, you know, uh, no one should get this wrong. Well, if someone does get this problem wrong, it's likely because they took the wrong order. So for example, if you're like, you know what, I like multiplication first, I'm gonna uh, start the problem this way, two times two is four. Well, if you started the problem this way, you are going to get the wrong answer. So a lot of you are saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that's exactly what I did. Well, no big deal. Matter of fact, I'm glad that you made this error because it is a very common misunderstanding when it comes to the order of operations. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this thing right now. Okay, so here is our problem. And uh, let's suppose you are taking a math test and you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't know really what to do here. What should I do? Well, if it's a multiple choice question, just take a guess, right? Now, unless you're going to get the wrong answer, always, always guess. You know, for me as a math teacher, I don't have a, a problem with that. What I do have a problem is with uh, uh, students leaving questions blank, especially multiple choice uh, <laughs> questions. I'm like, please guess because I want you to pass your exam. So you have a one out of four chance here. So some of you might be saying, no, oh, no, uh, 90 looks like a good guess to me. Well, that is a fantastic guess. Unfortunately, it, it's wrong, but uh, at least you took a, a chance on trying to answer the question. But in, uh, the only way to really get this problem right is to know the correct order of operations, assuming, again, you know how to do basic multiplication, uh, basic division, addition, again, and multiplication. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this uh, thing right now. And uh, really what we need to do is think about the problem this way. All right, well, what is the first thing I should do? You already told me that two times two is wrong, so we can't start the problem. Uh, with uh, multiplication. So where do we need to start the problem? Like what is the first move uh, in this little game, right? It's almost like a game of chess or checkers. What uh, is the best first move? Well, there's only one right move to make in terms of uh, the first move. And that is obviously step number one in the correct order of operations. Now I keep saying the order of operations. So just a quick review, things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. These things are called mathematical operations, but sometimes in a problem like this, you can also have parentheses, you can also have power, so we need to know what is the right order, and that brings us to this thing right here, which is PEMDAS, all right? So this is a lovely uh, little acronym that tells us the correct order of operations. So I'm gonna explain this little crazy chart right here, but uh, before I do, uh, I'm gonna give you a little mnemonic that is a memory aid to remember this acronym, P-E-M-D-A-S. So that is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. One more time, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. 
So this phrase has been around forever. Uh, but if you ever forget uh, the acronym PEMDAS, just think of your Aunt Sally or Aunt Sally, and they'll uh, be like, oh, yes, now I remember PEMDAS, but what does PEMDAS mean? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that right now. Okay, so obviously uh, we're talking about uh, uh, letters here that represent something. So let's start with P. Bef uh, before I even, <clears throat> excuse me, before I even explain this, uh, what we're talking about here is a checklist that goes from left to right. Okay, so we're going to start from the left and work our way towards the right. So that's why we have this little arrow like this. So let's go ahead and start. All right, so the first thing we need to assess in our math problem is if we have uh, any uh, P situations. And what we're talking about here is parentheses. So if we have parentheses in our problem, now these are parentheses like so. But uh, the, this uh, P really stands for grouping symbols. Now we're gonna, we're not, we're not gonna put G down here for grouping symbols, but uh, brackets like this are grouping symbols and so are these kind of squiggly brackets, anything that groups numbers together. So if I have like two times three, uh, divided by eight. Uh, if I group the problem this way, that's one type of group, but I could also group the problem this way. Okay, so that's another type of group. So grouping symbols group numbers together, and it can certainly impact the problem, right? But that's what P stands for. So again, if there's any parentheses in your problem, you're going to start here. Now, sometimes, uh, just one more thing about parentheses, you have multiple parentheses in a problem, so what should you do there? Well, you just start with the innermost parentheses. So you start uh, with all the math inside these parentheses, you finish all that, and then you just keep expanding out and working the problem uh, that way. Okay, so that is P. Now, uh, just because we have PEMDAS doesn't necessarily mean that every single problem is gonna have one of these uh, operations to uh, do, okay? But we just need to be thinking about this acronym. All right, so the next thing is E, and that stands for exponents. So uh, something like two to the third power. This little three right here is the exponent part of the power. The two is the base, uh, but the entire thing is a power. So when you see E, basically we're going to do any power situations in a problem. Now, again, if the problem has no powers, you just kind of skip that step and you move on to the next step. All right, so this next step is probably the number one most confused thing uh, in the order of operations, at least from my decades of experience. So you definitely want to pay attention. You're like, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I can't wait to see this. Well, a lot of you, uh, well, matter of fact, let me just start it this way. M, D, A, and S, what does uh, M, D, and A, and A, and S stand for? Well, M is multiplication, D is division, A is addition, and S is subtraction. Now, some of you might be saying, well, the next thing on our little checklist here, Mr. YouTube Math Man, is multiplication. So we should do all multiplication, right? Well, no, not exactly. So this is where people get frustrated and like, hey, why does math have to be so confusing? Well, you know, sometimes this isn't stressed uh, well enough uh, in a lot of math uh, courses or textbooks. It's taught, but, uh, you know, this really needs to be stressed. And that is multiplication and division is a group, okay, so we have P, parentheses, and then uh, E, exponents, powers. The next thing on our checklist is multiplication or division. So if we have multiplication or division, what we're gonna do is uh, whatever we see first from left to right. So if we have multiplication and then division, we're gonna do multiplication first, but if we have division, then multiplication, we're going to do division first, right? So if you have a problem where you have both uh, multiplication and division, you need to uh, you know, basically ask yourself, hey, what do I see first from left to right? And that is what you're going to do. And addition and subtraction work the same way, okay? Again, it's whatever you see first from left to right. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this PEMDAS knowledge to work. If you wanna write this down or follow along, I think that's a great way of doing it. But you're, uh, for the most part, you're not going to always write this PEMDAS acronym uh, next to your problem. You can kind of think of it uh, when you're first starting out, it's perfectly fine to write the acronym out and just, you know, uh, check on it and think about it. And in my opinion, the best way to learn anything, especially mathematics, is to learn how to do one problem nice and slow. So you write out each step. Think about it instead of trying to do you know 10 problems you know really fast it's better to just learn how to do one problem correctly and then you know uh, understand the concepts and the procedures so let's go ahead and get into this right now 
So here is our problem. Now, I already kind of underlined the steps here, but let's go ahead and explain it. So we have the problem, we have parentheses, all right? So PEMDAS parentheses. So we have to do everything inside of the parentheses. So I can't even think about multiplying by this three until I finish up everything inside of the parentheses. So when we go inside of the parentheses, it's like a separate little problem. Now, sometimes you'll have to ask yourself, all right, I'm inside this little world right here. Is there any uh, more parentheses? So again, it's like its own problem within a problem. All right, we don't have any more parentheses. Do we have any powers, right? So again, well, let's just kind of write this up here, PEMDAS. All right, so uh, we're inside parentheses. Do we have any powers? No, we do not. Do we have any multiplication or division? Indeed, we do. We have multiplication and division. So this is division and this is multiplication. So if you were confused about PEMDAS, you would do the multiplication first, right? So that's gonna be two times two, and that is going to create a wrong answer. So what we have to do here is what we see first from left to right, which of course is the division. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. 16 divided by two is eight. Now uh, notice here, I'm just writing one step at a time, and this is the way you want to do your math work, all right? Uh, just take one step, another step, another step. Uh, sometimes uh, students or people just get, uh, for lack of a better word, a little lazy. They're like, eh, no, I just want to just do all my work right here. I know what I'm doing. And then uh, when somebody looks <laughs> looks at the work, like your teacher or maybe yourself, you'll be like, uh, I don't even know what I wrote. Uh, I'm pretty sure all of you can relate. And uh, if you're kind of naturally not the neatest person like myself, you're going to have to just work on becoming becoming neater, all right? So slow down and really focus on neatness and organization and, struct, and structure. Math is a language, and the way you write it is it really will impact on, uh, uh, you know, your ability to get the right answer. Okay, so here is our first step. We did the divisions, um, 16 divided by 2, that's 8. So now we're still inside of the parentheses, right? So we're not done yet. So we're focusing in here. We're like, all right, we'll have addition and multiplication. Well, multiplication is always going to trump addition. So we're going to do eight times two, which of course is 16. All right, so eight times two is 16. And notice I'm kind of writing it one step at a time. And this is exactly how you should uh, write your work again. I'm kind of being redundant, but I need to stress this point. Okay, so we're still not done with parentheses. So really this step here, when it comes to PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S, uh, this step is not yet closed out because we have to finish the work here. And most of you are saying, oh, this is now easy, Mr. YouTube Math Man. And indeed, it should be very easy to get the right answer from here. But uh, let's go to take the next step, which is to have you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, just don't you love the way I kind of sneak that in? Well, I have to sneak this in because I need your help and I'm not shy to ask for your help because I have a goal. Now, hopefully these are two words that uh, you don't mind using uh, yourself. Hopefully you have goals, uh, more than just one goal. Now, if your goal is to learn mathematics, uh, maybe you're reviewing math or maybe you're struggling with math, well, get help, okay? We all need assistance. Uh, certainly you want to try to do the best you can on your own, but when you you know, don't understand something, it's best to go look for help. Now, who you ask uh, help from <laughs> really does uh, affect your ability to learn something. Now, you know, if you're asking someone who's struggling, hey, can you explain this to me? Well, that's not a good idea. So when it comes to math, you really do want to find, you know, the best math instruction, the best math teachers. Hopefully you have access to one. But if you do not and you need, a, you know, really full on, uh, comprehensive, rigorous course instruction. Okay, that's clear and understandable. Well, you gotta check out my full May math courses. You can see the links to those in the description of this video. And for what we're talking about here, I would recommend two courses. Uh, my first is my Math Foundations course. That's a little three chapter mini course on basic math and my Math Skills Rebuilder course, right? That course obviously rebuilds your uh, math skills starting from basic math into algebra and geometry, some other things as well. And uh, for those of you that are at the pre-algebra level, you might wanna check out uh, my pre-algebra course. I kind of cover these topics there. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem. And by the way, make sure to hit that subscribe button as you click that subs uh, uh, notification bell, excuse me, as you click that subscribe button. Okay, so thanks for being patient with me. I know I talk a lot. 
but uh, you know, it is important. And now let's finish up this problem because really there is not much to do. Okay, so we have three times four plus 16. We're not done with the parentheses, but four plus 16 is 20. And then we have three times 20, which is 60. Now what's going on here seems to be like a basic arithmetic problem. And that's pretty much what this is. And as I indicated, and in the beginning of this video, a simple problem like this, you know, oftentimes is not given enough respect by people that are looking to do mathematics. Now, why is that the case? Well, personally, I think it's because we get uh, too used to using our calculators, right? So when you use your calculator and you really get away from good old fashioned old school paper and pencil mathematics, you're going to lose your math skills. That's why I say put your calculators away. Not that I'm against you know, uh, calculators, okay? Uh, obviously we need calculators and our calculators are awesome, but you need to understand the concepts, the principles, because when you go on to higher level mathematics like algebra, okay, your calculator is not going to really be able to help you so much because you're dealing with variables and likes. So you got to understand these concepts, right? And uh, really, I've seen this uh, year after year after year. Most people who struggle in algebra, even like uh, more advanced uh, math, like pre-calculus, if they're having difficult times in geometry, algebra, algebra 2, doesn't make a difference, I can almost always track it back to kind of a weak foundation, okay? Maybe they're uh, a little bit shaky on fractions or the order of operations. So if you are struggling in math, what you need to do is really make sure you have a super strong uh, foundation and then kind of build up from there. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.